Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic, and this is the third in our series of one-on-ones for the uh, the ballad of, well, Dakar now, I guess, or Little Jimmy, depending on your point of view. <laughs> depending uh, on which character you like more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, yeah, of course, I'm Dakar, the human fighter, and uh, yep, hello Jack Bull. Good afternoon, Jim. Are you... Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. Boy, did we have a hell of a last episode, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and I want your... Now, this is all out of character here to start, right? But I want to know how you felt. Did you honestly... What, what was your honest internal reaction when you saw Molaram turn into a splatter of, of blood on the ground? Oh, I, mean, I thought it was very cool. I thought it was very cool. But uh, also, I thought, oh, God, we are completely unequipped to deal with a night demon. <laughs> I still think so. I went back. I always like to go back and watch all of our episodes, brother. I think Dimmy had the best reaction when he goes, I think our work is done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was like, and we just turn around and walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could have all done like the Homer Simpson just, <laughs> just back up. <laughs> just right into the bush, right? <laughs> yeah. That would have been amazing if we'd all just done that. If we'd all just backed up, right? Well, see you later. Glorious. Yes, so it solved one problem, but then created a myriad of others. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> it's, well, it's uh, not tough, but interesting, right? Because mm. you know, the, some of the some of the most fun campaigns that I've ever been a part of, whether I was playing or whether I was DMing, was just because you can't solve everything with a crossbow or a sword, right? That's all I can solve anything with. <laughs> I've got intelligence well, no, and, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, but, but in all honesty, right? I mean, you can't, you've got to assume it, not every campaign or, or arc or whatever the hell you want to call them has to culminate in whether the bad guy dies or the party dies, right? Yes. yes. Now, in this case, one of the bad guys died, but <laughs> you know what I'm getting at. You guys had yeah. nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no. very interesting, but anyway, so I'm going to ask you, so we when we started with the others, uh, we know that we, we're, we're going to assume that we had just finished up the, the the ending of that conversation with Night Demon, right? We faded to black. We came back and we saw that physics was introduced as one of the alt, one of the and it's all gods. It's A U L D G H O D S, mm. and, and it's that way for a reason, right? No. Um, the theory, my theory, being that you know the languages evolve over time. Sometimes become shorter. Sometimes become pronounced differently however you want to put it but in that we are dealing with something that is much more ancient than than anything we've ever dealt with before mm -hmm. um and i talked to uh flargal and i talked to dimitriev now we still have to get Eliad's input into this but you have no knowledge whatsoever of the old gods nothing yeah. it doesn't chime a bell None of your education, nothing, none of the things that you've interacted with, read anything. Mm -hmm. This is a totally foreign concept to you. Um, in addition, the sheer power, as you had mentioned, is a totally foreign concept to you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, Flargo Snarp's reaction was a little bit different than you would have expected, right? Because he's dealt with dragons. Yeah. Now, a dragon may not necessarily have the power of Night Demon. You don't know yet. But this, I don't want to say this is old hat for, for Flargo Snarp. <laughs> but the, the four of you, including Elon, the four of you were very wide-eyed. And Flargo Snarp was very, what's this bastard want? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's, you've noted that. You've noted that interaction. So you guys are leaving. All, all five of you are done with the interaction. You have literally just heard um, Night Demon give Elliot the ring and tell him, you know, touch your forefinger and your thumb to this ring and you will be transported back for even just the simplest of conversations and bring your friend. And he had asked, may I bring my compatriots, his words, mm -hmm. and... and um, Night Demon's response was absolutely, yes. Mm. <clears throat> so if you remember the layout, you had the, the set of columns that you passed through before you got to the, the Arc Deas, where between you were was the, the I don't want to call it a pool, but a river of blood and all of that. So you're, you're egressing from there and you come out of those columns. What's kind of the first thing in, 
you're, you're not going to discuss it with the other, but what's what's Daka's reaction in his head? Where's his mind going with this? Well, this is good because I wanted to ask you this uh, as a kind of out of character thing in this in this universe, as it were, or world, whatever. Uh, like, does everybody yeah. know that gods are real? <laughs> So, yes, the gods are very much so, but the gods as you know them. Mm. So here's how gods exist in, 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 in our locale. Mm. They are very much part of, you cannot have clerics, you cannot have paladins, you cannot have anti-clerics, you cannot have anti-paladins. In some, in some phases, you cannot have druids without the gods. They get their spells, their powers are imbued upon them by the gods that they, and they don't, but now here's the thing. They don't have to be worshipped, right. right? We don't, in some cases they are. In some cases, these individuals, quote unquote, work for those gods on their behest. So they are tasked with certain things. Right. And in, in exchange for being tasked with those certain things, they are granted certain powers. Right. So in Eliot's case, he follows the chief engineer. The chief engineer is a very logical patron. He's not necessarily a god. Right. And in his, in Eliot's world, he is seeking out knowledge. He is seeking out artisanry. He is seeking out mechanics. He is seeking out these things. And But as a result of seeking these things, the god the patron, whatever, the um, the chief engineer has come to realize that his people need powers of healing to see to those ends, right? If they're going to go on these archaeological expeditions, if they're going to go on these journeys, if they have to have some type of, of protection for them. They just can't go out there as a professor and expect to survive in these environments, right? <laughs> right. They're not Indiana Joneses. No. Imagine if they were. Right. <laughs> so then you have your gods or goddesses that are quote unquote worshipped. You have other gods that are that have just a simple relationship. I like to look at the elven gods for those, right? They have a very much a one on one conduit with their elven because they are doing certain specific things. They're protecting forest lands, they're protecting you know, so there's it's a very different relationship there. So yes, you definitely know that there are gods and they exist. There is a healthy respect for the gods, even if you don't quote unquote believe in them and what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you Meaning, can't not believe in them, right? If they're real, like I hate to break it to yeah, anybody so watching. You, <laughs> in, that's in the exactly real world, right. So you know, real. it's <laughs> it's a smart thing not to say, "Hey, fuck you, chief engineer," because a chief engineer could come down and be like, "Excuse me," <laughs> right? But at the same time, you don't if you don't owe fealty to them or you know decide you're going to work on their behest, they're not going to look at you and try to smear you out of the universe, right? Yeah. That's not. It's not an adversarial thing. Yeah. There are wars among the gods, mm -hmm. right? Gods can go in opposition to each other in certain aspects as well. Mm -hmm. and so yes, you do like believe even... in the concept of the gods. They are out there, though Daka may not necessarily, you know, there, there is, while there are gods of justice, you don't feel the need to, unless you choose to, owe fealty to a god of justice to do your job. There is still the justice of man, the justice of dwarves, the justice of elves, and that all exists outside of the pa uh, the, the pantheon of the gods, if you will. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, yep, yep. And like, so the average person on the street will know that gods are real. Yes. Right, right. okay. Yeah, so, you know they're real. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you interacted with one before now? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen somebody, the closest you've seen somebody interact with a god to this point has been when Eliad um, reached out to his patron three episodes ago i want to say and he and he, and he asked for an intervention yeah. and his god granted him all of his hit points all of his spell slots because he knew he was doing what he needed to get done yeah and you saw that and right elliot you were all damaged uh, wounded elliot just stood right up and he was spotless yeah so you know but but you don't know what that relationship is you don't understand it you don't comprehend the direct relationship, but you understand that there is a relationship there. Yeah. So in that case, 
Dakar is obviously going to be a bit mind blown, but not completely mind blown. <laughs> well, I think the mind blown is is you've never, to your knowledge, and I would I would say safely to your knowledge, you've never seen or spoken to someone who has witnessed one in the quote unquote flesh. Mm. You don't know if he was an image. You don't know if it was him specifically. You don't know if you could walk up and touch him, right? Mm. But this is the first that you have ever seen, heard. So th from that aspect, you would definitely be in awe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On top of that, learning that there may be something older than the gods of this world would really, it, that would really mind fuck you. <laughs> yeah. It would. It would just, you'd just be like, wait a second, there's something else. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you were a Christian on earth, right? And someone else came on and said, yeah, but I made that God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like we, we we do all of these things, and I'm being you know polite to any religion. I just grabbed Christianity as an example. It's you know it, it, there's there's those aspects of it. Or if you met the person who came up with, you know, Sir Isaac Newton theorized about gravity, and we've since proved it. But if somebody rolled in and said, "Yeah, I made that," <laughs> it'd be like, "Whoa!" You know, that's a whole nother level of mind blown. Mm, yeah. So quite mind blown, and obviously intelligence eight. So even more mind blown. <laughs> Well, but you don't have to have intelligence for that. Remember that there's a difference between worldly intelligence and what do I know from books? Yeah. You're yeah. not a learned guy, Daka. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah, I just like to make fun but, of it. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm just saying, I mean, that's you're not a learned guy, but that doesn't mean that you're you're you don't understand that you were you were in a life and death situation there. Yes, yeah. W wisdom's fine. It's just he's not very good at Sudoku's. <laughs> There you go. That's a good. There, there you go. Yeah, maybe that's a good example, right? He could get, you know, a third of the Sudoku done, and then at that point, he's just throwing the paper away. Yeah. You know, Dimi, Dimitra would never pull out his chess set with you. Yeah. Correct. Oh dear. So what would what would Dimitriev's? I'm sorry. What would Daka's mindset be? The minute he pat, like literally. The second he passes through those columns, where would his mind go? I mean, it would be it would be completely blown, wouldn't it? It would be just like you'd probably just have to sit down and like uh, and like oh yeah, just sit down and like just try and make sense of the world. <laughs> and guess. that's a good point, right? Because now, what what else did we think was true that may now not be true? Mm -hmm. That's a very good. Nobody else is now. We haven't had Elliot's episode yet. So nobody else has come up with that thought process yet, right? Mm. There's, there's now a supposed new truth. Mm. How does that affect things around you? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, be a lot. It'd be a lot. I think it'd just be mostly just mind blown, and then, uh, and then you know, sit there for a bit, and then eventually, I guess, you know, just think, well, we've got to get on, got to get on with the job, right? And uh, pick up all the scimitars. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go back through what you what you rolled out now. We talked with the others, and, and it was kind of agreed that you would egress without necessarily looting like crazy, right? Because yeah. Demetra was like, dude, does he live here now? Florbo yeah. Snarp is like, I don't like this guy. I don't like being tethered to anybody. I want nothing to do with him. Elon would just simply follow. He's still been charged with, with protecting the Nam on their way out. Mm -hmm. What is Daka's mindset as far as that's concerned? Yeah, I think just you know, obviously, yeah, you just want to get out, right? You want to get out, you want to get the flip out of there um, as quickly and safely as possible. Yeah, that would be the main. That would be the main thing. We could always go back and loot properly later, can't we? Investigate properly. Well, yep, and we talked about that in the other streams as well. Keep in mind, I want to make a make a, a keep. I want to remind you of this. There's only five people who currently know about the temple itself. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, the four of you and Elon. Yeah. There's seven additional people who are the manservants. There is the country wizard, Ordialensis. There is Kalon. And I don't recall if Elliot had a conversation with the owner of the Rowdy Gnome as to the actual catacombs themselves. Mm -hmm. 
So you're still the only ones. You walk out of the you, you, the minute you walk out of the temple area back up into we'll just say like the second level of the catacombs. Yeah. There's only five of you who know that's down there. Of course, Night Demon knows, <laughs> but um, but there's only you know it's not like this is not well known knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So we talked about, so it's, it's a day and a half. You got, so at last check, right? We've got the decision to make in quote unquote 10 days. Yep. Um, it takes a day and a half to get back to Victa from, from the manor, right? A half a day or so to the crossroads. That's the best place to camp. And then a day down into Victa, uh, just with the others, you know, you, you arrive in a town around sunset, right? 6 p.m., 7 p.m., mm -hmm. right around there. Um, before you get to Victa, um, you know, you see some of the familiar plumes of light smoke coming from the, from the chimneys. Maybe the wind's blowing a little bit in your direction so you can smell whether it's venison or something cooking when you're, you know, three, uh, a quarter of a mile out on the wind. Who knows, right? But, but, but you, you feel more rested because the farther away you get from mortal danger, the better you feel. Yeah. Um, and you overhear... The conversation between Dmitriov and Elon regarding, well, kind of what happens now for me and the manservants, right, between Elon and Dmitriov. And it's kind of, a, it's, it's a soft agreement that um, Dmitriov has invited Elon to keep going with you as his charge and that they will figure out what to do and what's best for the seven others. Mm -hmm. And that God willing, God willing, that, um, you know, whomever patron willing that if you can somehow save one or more of the sisters, that perhaps the best thing is to is is for them to inherit the manor, and see if they even want to stay there. And you're not even sure whether or not that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it gives you a good feeling that Elon's like, you know what? I, I want to. Elon was a good fighter, right? He he stood guard on the Nam. He put away a few people. He um, he absorbed a few hits. He never backed down, even after Faps fell. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know he doesn't have the skill set that you guys do, but not a lot do. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, it gives you it gives you good 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 feelings that there is another strong arm amongst your group. Yep. So um, when you start to arrive in Victor, we'll say you're 200 yards from the gates. Where where does your mind go there? You're back. You're you're coming back home, right? Back home, yeah. I just got. I mean, just like, you know, go back to oh, where? Like, well, here's a question: Do I have a house in Victor, or do like, do I live in Victor? So you do. Remember, we talked about that. As a member of the Gray, you would have been given simple accommodations, right. because you also have the 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 um, uh, the safety deposit box in the Rothwell house. Right. Um, they want you there, right? Members of the Gray are invited in in ninety percent of the communities hmm. because it's it's one of those things where it's kind of an understood benefit, and Kalon loves it because look what he got. He didn't have to deal with this, right? Yeah. Not that he was shirking the responsibility. He's he's a busy dude. He's hmm. the magistrate, and when you showed up in town, he was like, "All right, here's a guy that I've sent you." Remember, he had sent you on a couple of small duties before. He had assembled the team for you. And you would come back at, um, one time with good report, you know, and um, so he trusts you. But, yeah, you, you're welcome in this community as far as it's concerned. Also, remember that the community, you, you have a small reputation there, right? We talked about when you wear your street clothes versus when you wear your uniform of the gray mm. and how you change personas, if you will. Yeah. And when people see you in the uniform of the gray, it's a little bit of a different reaction <laughs> than when Daka's out and about in his in his street clothes. Yep. Right? They know that something I don't want to say something bad is gonna happen, but there's an individual out there somewhere that's gonna have a bad day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so I mean and, and I guess everyone else is going the rowdy gnome, aren't they? The rowdy gnome, sorry, not the gnome, Elliot's the gnome. And I guess I guess that's where all the other people are. So I guess, uh, I guess we'd go in there first. But I guess my main thing would be just get you know sorted out and then report back to Kalon as soon as possible. Okay, so you know that the the seven individuals are at the Rowdy Gnome, mm. the the seven man servants and all of that. 
Um, it's kind of an understood amongst the rest of the party, so we'll assume it's an understood for you that maybe we'll say in two days' time, everybody's going to kind of rally at the Quad Skull. You haven't been directly invited into the Rowdy Gnome. It's a well-known location for the gnomish folks around here. Right. It's not that you wouldn't be invited. It's just that you feel more comfortable at the Quad Skull or even at the Black Garden. Mm -hmm. The Black Garden is one of the finest restaurants in the area. Oh, lovely. Um, so it's kind of understood that in about two days' time, everybody's going to kind of rally at the Quad Skull to kind of have this discussion of what the hell do we do now? But um, so you get back into town, you, you, or do you change out of your Gray's uniform before you go see Kalon? No, no, because still on business there, right? Still on okay. business. Okay. So you go back to your, your location, right? You, you, you drop your backpacks, torches, all of the extras, right? You never are without your, your hand crossbow mm -hmm. that never leaves your side, even in the street clothes, right? It's always, it's always on your hip. Um, is your, is your, is your, oh no, you gave your crossbow to, to Elliot. Um, so you, you clean up, right? You dust off your jerkin, your, 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 your stuff. You, you put a fresh coat of water across your face, all of that stuff. And you go and you report to Kalon's office. Um, you walk in, you open the doors to the, um, to the, to the city center, if you will, the seat of the government. And, um, inside immediately they recognize you. And they, uh, the, the, the guard on uh, duty says, allow me one moment. He raps on what you know to be Kalon's door. Um, Kalon opens from the inside, sees you there immediately and invites you in. Ah, oh, Daka, come on in. It is good to see you, my friend. I figured you would be back. I, after seeing you the last time, I had no doubts of your return. <laughs> wow. And then you go through the door. The guardsman closes the door behind you. And you know his job is is he's standing outside that door. Nobody will know what's going on in this room of non-magical means, obviously. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, Kalon, you're not going to believe <laughs> what happened down there. So, so when you're saying that, tell me, tell me what facial expression are you? Are you? Is it almost like a, a face of? Because you're usually a very stern. Yes, You've it's seen going to a be lot. stern. It's going to be stern, isn't it? It'll still be stern. Okay, which is fine. Stern. It'll still be stern because it's like, it's my, like obviously in all this time, right, got over the fact of how mental it was. And it was, yeah, it's going to be very stern and grave. Like the situation is pretty horrendous, isn't it? <laughs> like whichever way you slice it, there's a... Oh, it is. Okay, so, a... so he, when looking at you, he doesn't, he, instead of reacting to your words of, you know, something grave has occurred or however you, and I'll let you ver verbalize it in a second. He doesn't bat an eyelash because he just assumes you're going to give a report as normal. And no matter how dark this report may be, he needs to hear it. Mm. So go ahead, sir. Well, there you go. Um, oh God. So what, what happened since we always, like, yes, we went back, we went back to the catacombs. We went underneath the catacombs. There was a, uh, there was some kind of temple there. There was, uh, and we found this Mola Ram fella, the uh, the guy who was, you know, the leader of the cult. And uh, there was a big pool of blood and, you know, some kind of worms or something in, in there. God knows what it was. A big morass of flesh at the bottom of this uh, thing. And then something appeared and, you know, God knows what it is. Uh, so there you go. Something it says, and then it just obliterated Molaram, liquidized him um, instantly. So whatever this being is, so, it claims it's an old god. Okay. So as you are saying this, you know he 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 pays you complete attention, but he's pulled out a booklet, small one on his desk. He's opened it to several pages that are um, um, relatively empty, and he starts taking notes. And you can see he's taking notes on what it is you're saying. Um, Molaram with a question mark. Temple with a question mark. Um, you know, he, he's taking in everything. Now, um, one thing we didn't really talk about with the others, but I had assumed you would kind of be responsible for, were the two, we'll call them the prisoners, the, the, the folks who are from um, Victa, 
right? Mm -hmm. The green robed and blue robed individuals that I assumed you would kind of take responsibility for them, bring them back. And that you would then, would you, do you also report them to him or do you just kind of cut them loose inside the city gates? Um, well, they might have information when they say, yeah, I guess, I guess I'd have to tell them. Um, yeah, the cultists have yep, so, captured um, two fellas. Good. So you report and he writes down, you know, and I, I'd love to go back and look at my notes. I know one was Jame. I can't remember what I named the other one, but they'll have a small part to play in the future because undoubtedly you will want to talk to them or Kalon will or something along those lines, right? Yeah. So he's making down. So how, tell me, and I know you don't remember every single detail. It's my job to kind of fill some of those in for you, Jim, but, or Daka, but so how far, how in depth do you go? Do you go a hundred percent? Do you go 90%? Do you go 50%? How, what, what are you relaying here? Well, so I guess Daka would be in the habit of giving the minimum in case there was times he didn't want to give the maximum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've already mentioned the temple below the catacombs. Yeah. You've already mentioned something, and you mentioned Mola Ram, and you've also mentioned that he's a splatter of nothing on the ground. Yeah. I think this is so, fine. There's, there's nothing to hide, right? But, like... I don't think so. I agree with that. But still would be, like, would give minimal... Would, you would be in the habit of giving minimal details in case there was something to conceal with another job or like, you know, or any time in future, right? That would make sense, I think. Okay, so we'll, we'll say that it takes you about 15 minutes to go through your report, right? Because mm. um, he's gonna ask you very small clarifying questions. Um, but for the most part, you'll go into, yes, there's a dude named Molaram. There was a temple, we believe. So do you tell him like, do you believe that Molaram was in charge, that he was a cultist, that he was the one kind of responsible for all this? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, you know, um, the information you... he, he, Kalon wanted as well, right? Like, that was basically the mission was to was to work things like that out. So I think we got the... Well, we didn't get him, but the, but the guy got got. <laughs> do, do, you, do you tell him about the summoning of the major blood worm and, how, and, and that detail as well? I don't think that has to be told, no. I think... I think that would be a thing to not tell in the in the basis of not telling everything as a general rule. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's, that's there's nothing like I said. I mean, again, you know, you're you were tasked with figuring out what. Literally, his words were, "I don't know what's going on out there. You need to find out, yeah. and you need to handle it if possible because we don't want." And I I went over this with Dimitrov and, and Florgo. We don't want citizens with pitchforks and torches running out there to handle it themselves. Yeah, well, good do luck you if you tried. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Now knowing what you know. Do you think, would you have told him or gone into description, so how do you go about talking about Night Demon, keeping in mind that you're not telling him a lot about him because you've just explained that he killed Molaram, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's got to be some something going on there as far as your conversation. Kind of go into that just a little for me. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, it, you know, again, I don't think there's, there's any reason to hold anything back about Night Demon, as it were, right? Because being completely ignorant on the subject <laughs> um, of old gods and stuff, like, I don't know if, you know, he is an old god. He was certainly very powerful. He did explode somebody. Like, he just turned somebody into paste. <laughs> it's like, you know, just a big ball of blood. So, like, whether he's, like, some kind of wizard doing this, if he's a, if he is a demon, if he is an old god, like a manifestation or an avatar of an old god or whatever the hell he is, no idea what he is. He was up 25 foot tall and he just obliterated somebody. So... That, that's pretty much all I know, you know? That's all I can say. He, he acted like he was a god, right? He was saying he was one of the old gods. He called himself Night Demon, and he said they've been away for millennia, and now they're back. Okay, so then that's that's another good point to point out, um, Doc, is that, uh, you know, is Night Demon his name? Mm. <laughs> or is he a Night Demon? Mm. Is he the Night Demon? You know, you don't know these things yet, right? And you can't, you, you, you just, all you said is, I am Night Demon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you don't like, so you said, you know, you, for, when you first hear that term, right, the first thing that it goes to is the nine depths of hell. Um, it depends on which, which race you're talking about and all their versions of hell and or uh, punishment or whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, the, you know, in, in, in some, in some um, religions, the, you know, demons are not necessarily evil. In some, they are the embodiment of evil. 
in, you know, whatever that may be. So Kalon takes all of this in very, he's very intent. The minute you mention another bigger, badder thing, <laughs> he's very intent, right? So did you describe the combats? Like when you went at it with Molaram directly, did you kind of break that down? Like, dude, this guy used columns of flame. He had priests. They were, I mean, this is, this was like a full blown sect. Yeah, I would say that it was a hard fight, and that was about it. He was a powerful wizard. It was a tough battle, but uh, oh, and Faps, of course, got killed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's a tragedy. <laughs> so, you know, so th the next thing, so all you see at the bottom of this page, right? So do you, did you mention the term old god? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So all you see at the bottom of this page, and he spells it incorrectly. You and I, out of character, know it as A-U-L-D-G-H-O-D-S, mm. right? He spells it O-L-D-G-O-D-S. Yeah. And he underlines it three times. Mm. And then he closes his book and puts it down. And he says, off the record now. Is this done? Can we? How do we consider this done? We, you're, you're, you're confident the cult is dealt with, or at least this sect of them, right? Yeah, yeah. So how does one relate to the other? How do I, I when I go to the city council and I report to them on this, in your viewpoint, Daka, how do I, I can't report this as completed. I, I, this is almost like, God, we've opened yet another missing person, right? <laughs> Except this time we're looking for a God. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the job that we were tasked with is done. <laughs> That's it, the definitely. Thing. No, no. Your job That's is done. I'm talking thing. about hmm. in your estimation, in your, your viewpoint, so, D D Daka, did you tell him that you have to go back in 10 days? Do you tell him anything about... Did you tell him about the sisters? There we go. That's a good point, the sisters. Yeah, I probably got to. So, yeah, I probably got to tell him about the sisters and the 10 days, yeah. yeah. Okay, and the 10 days. Okay, yeah. so, interesting. So, won't tell so him about now... Eliod. Won't tell him about Eliod and the ring, but just tell him about the 10 days and the sisters. Yeah. Okay, so do you tell him about the choice? Obviously, you. Yeah. I, w I would assume if, you, if you're telling him the 10 days... Okay, yeah. so he says... So he looks at you. Um, we're we're going to rewind about ten minutes into the story, right? And he and he t and he and he says to you, he says, "We thought the sisters had moved on with the father. The father must then either the father is dead or the father moved on without them. Are you telling me the sisters are alive?" And when he says that, he's just <laughs> no, right? alive is relative. Yeah. So when he but when he says that, he's like, you know, again, right, like. We started with a singular line of what the hell's out there, and now we have four different directions, five <laughs> different, six different directions. Yeah. And he acknowledges then, yeah, the work that I tasked you with was done. You know, payment has been made in full. It's in your inbox. You're good to go. Um, he totally respects that. So what are we, so, so, so Gray, undoubtedly we will be tasked again with more investigation here what is what what is the report that we give in this in this in this regard it's a good question that's your job isn't it <laughs> I mean, well it is my job but i have to go off of your your insight as well uh, you are going to return in 10 days we understand that we know that we have closed i can't say we've closed the book on the cult it looks to be closed Hmm. There are still several other questions. You know, how did the cult get their hands on this information? Who is this night demon? And he goes in quotes. Hmm. Who are the old gods? Hmm. Or is there more than one? But these are all questions for wiser and deeper men than ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Hope. I mean, that's where you've got to start, I guess. Is 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 trying to understand what the hell's going on because we can't we can't defeat what we don't understand, can we? Or even resolve things. Is it even things? capable of being defeated? But we have to, we have to assume that there is. 
there are these sisters to worry about. These are citizens of Victa. Yeah. When they took when they took up residence with their mother, after, well, when they were born, ostensibly when their mother and father took up residence, they became citizens of Victa, and we are responsible for their safety to the extent possible of securing their safety. Yeah. So we've closed one book and we've opened yet another. We have to... What do you feel is the best possible? Do you feel in your heart of hearts that it's possible to get all three back? Well, he's he's seems very like capricious or uh, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> you say caprice. You put your thumb up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he seems capricious. You yeah. say the, that one word to sound good that day. <laughs> um. So I don't know if he, you know, he's like beyond us, right? Like he doesn't seem very logical or interested in any kind of deal or, you know, discussion or anything. I don't know that he can be dealt with or reasoned with or anything. And he might choose to just kill all three on a whim or he might choose to let all three go or anything. I mean, the deal is one, one comes back with us. So I guess... You you could get together with the with you know the fellas the you know the big wigs in Victor and and decide who who gets to, who gets to live. I guess you guys could do that, and we could just relay that choice. But I mean, I don't think there's going to be any way to uh, you know, to get more than one. Damn you, Jimmy! <laughs> I didn't even think about that as an option. Now you got me thinking about whether or not the city council would actually get involved in something like that, right? Yeah. If you had, um, and this is out of character, obviously, mm. if you have reported that to Kalon and he reports that, which he will, mm. to the council, and then there's the well. Now, what do we do as the council, right? Now, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, it's 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 like when you report a crime, right? So, ah, God damn you, Jim. <laughs> So back in character, so Kalen comes back and says, you know, so the cult is done. Thank you. First of all, and he steps back and he says, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you for assisting us for this. Thank you for assisting the town of Victa. Thank you for doing what the four of you did in order to deal with the cult and what was going on there. I knew there was something going on. I had no clue what it is. I am stretched too thin and I we we don't have the correct people prior to your arrival to trust with such activities. So let me take a step back and thank you all for that. Yep. <laughs> Just a nod, I guess, be... is all Dak is going to do. He's not going to be like... <laughs> well, of course, but, he, you know, Kalen kind of snapped back into magistrate role, mm -hmm. right? You've done a great service for the town. You have resolved at least to, a, you know, a 90% factual that Laura Tillick is dead. Benton Tillick is probably dead. We know of the location of the three sisters... And we know what is at least going on from a standpoint of the cult and the cultists, though we may not understand how that relates to how things grow and all of that out there. We think we have an idea, right? We, we know that the worms are involved somehow, so on and so forth. So he says, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, and I would be happy to report this to um, both the, uh, the seat of the government and to your superiors as I will be sending off um, writ for you, that you have done a, uh, that you and the and the other three have done a phenomenal job in this, and, and and I thank you for that. On to bigger and better things, because as we all know, especially in your line of work, once one thing is done, we just simply move on to the next. We have to do our best to secure the safety of these three, of the three daughters, not only for the knowledge that they may hold in what's going on out there, but just the fact that they are citizenry of Victa. Mm -hmm. So I will meet with the seat of the government. We will figure out, you You will undoubtedly be tasked with this since the, you will be returning. I can't imagine a, per, a better person simply because of how deep you're already involved in this. Yeah. The four of you, not just you on your own, obviously. Um, 
you know, he, he doesn't really know or understand Elon's relationship with you yet. And we will figure out how that will be remunerated. You will be offered payment, you and the four again. And, uh, and we'll figure out what it is that you need for that task. So we have to secure the safety of the three sisters as best possible. To the, ex- to the extent possible, we'll say. Yeah. Um, from your viewpoint, you don't believe we'll get, we can, we, there's a way to get all three back? I mean, I can't think of it. I mean, maybe, maybe more, you know, more learned people than I can, uh, can, can think of something. But, uh, you know, from discussing him, I mean, Elliot the Nom is a, is an intellectual giant, and he wasn't able to get much headway with Night Demon. He did seem to amuse him a little bit, so you know, he, he seemed to interest him a bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a way, but um, it, I don't know. He just seems. It seems that his motivations are so far beyond ours and there's nothing we have to offer him <laughs> that it just seems a lost cause almost. Were you able to explore and um, bring back anything additional from the, to the temple or the catacombs at all regarding this? Because we still have to assume that this, I would assume, I, I've never seen a sect operate alone. Mm. Very rarely do you see a sect and or a cultist operation that it, that doesn't have its its tentacles wrapped in several areas, with the exception of you know murderous bands of individuals or something along those lines. This seems much more organized, does it not? It's interesting. I mean, there was this small around guy. It did seem all based around him. You know, like specifically, um, he seemed to be the one pulling all of the strings. I would say and. You know his vision. He was the one who did the summoning. He was the one who wanted the power. The others just seemed, you know, I I don't know. I think it and also localized with this. You know the the all of the growth in the manor and everything. You know the the that seems very localized, right? I don't know if there's any tales of similarly flourishing um, manors anywhere else around the countryside, but um, maybe there is. Maybe maybe there's information about that, but. Um, I wouldn't even, and he kind of sidetracks himself a little bit. I wouldn't even know where to start with that question, to be honest. I mean, how how would I how would I question my peers and say, you know, would you happen to have, you know, this occurring? And he, he giggles softly just because it's so idiotically stupid that he's even mentioning it. You know, do you happen to have, you know, a cult in your area worshiping a worm of some kind? Yeah. You know, and... and but then he kind of brings himself back to the reality of, but people have lost their lives in this, right? Mm. It seems quite localized, right? Unless there were other places, like, you know, if if Laura Tillich is so well known in Victor, you know, for having this amazing place, like, there's no one else known like that, is there? You know? Not in Victor, no. That's mm. that's true. Not in Victor. We don't... This is This is truly a unique situation for me as far as I'm concerned. You know, my, my whole, to be quite honest with you, I had no, I had not even the thought that there may be some type of a cult or cultist activity out there. I had assumed, you know, rather naively so now looking back that it may have been roving bands of, of, of a beast or something along those lines or, you know, a, a small group of robbers who were, you know, killing off whom they kidnapped. We just... And that maybe they were just working in the same area. I didn't think it would go as deep as this. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. It, it could. It could be just. It could just be one. Uh, one. One sect, couldn't it? It doesn't have to be. But you know, we can. We can investigate. We, obviously, we. We made a. We beat a somewhat hasty retreat after. <laughs> after someone displayed the fact that he. Uh, he could explode people, you know, into red mist. <laughs> we didn't really want to uh, to stick around, but we could definitely, you know, we can definitely go back and uh, investigate fully. And that, and that's um, that, that that that's you know, he he looks at you goes and that that was probably a wise course of action. And he says that with a straight face. He's you know he's being he's like yeah he's like I, I think I would have beaten a hasty retreat as well, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it, it is better to retreat with the knowledge sometimes. And, and, and be able to assess things. Mm. This, so he looks at you and he says, so in your estimation, Gray, what is the next course of action outside of returning in 10 days? 
in regards to this. Wow. I mean, we've, we're, 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 we're assuming that, that we're done with the first, first portion of this, but what, with your insight and your knowledge of the situation, what would you have us do next? What do you think we should be doing next? Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I think the council should be thinking about if there's a way to possibly save, or, you know, all three or, you know, the who they should save. And then also how are you going to deal with the fact that there, there are old gods exist or around? Like, you know, I don't know, like I, I, it's beyond it's beyond my ken, really. Do you know what I mean? I think that's a job for people, not not just a simple lawman. Fair enough. I would. Oh, it's 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 a. It's a t I mean, you obviously are going back. You have to go back. I don't know who else I would send. To be quite honest with you, um, I've of course, as as expected, I would expect that you would keep this these conversations between us, as far as not alerting the citizens of Victor, because what we have just opened may be a larger hornet's nest than we had that than we thought we were dealing with before. Yes, I mean it could be it could be like absolutely country countrywide, planet wide, couldn't it? Like this, you know, there's no limit on how big this could be, potentially. Fair enough. So what we'll do then is I will meet with the seat of the government tomorrow first thing. I will offer your report. Um, I will offer my report, which will reflect pretty much what you have said, since I was nowhere around there. Um, the two individuals that you brought back, uh, we have, we, I've given them room and board over at the Quad Skull. I will be interviewed. I ask that you don't meet with them until I have. I'll be meeting with them later. I'm going to give them time to rest, recuperate a little bit, clear their minds. I find a lot of people would rather interrogate them instantly, but I find when you let somebody's mind clear a little bit and get a full belly under them, that they're actually much more amenable to their to their uh, memories than than any other situation. Um, I will interview them. We'll see if we can get any information out of them whatsoever. And I, I, the, the, the two cultists that you brought back that we have in chains, and he, and he kind of nods to like down below the, the, the floorboards, right? Like they're in the cellar somewhere. They've been completely unreliable. One is, is just praying for death and the other is so scared out of his wits, he'd, I wouldn't trust him if he told me the sky were blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, ret return to me tomorrow, maybe sometime mid-afternoon. We'll see what, what the council has come up with. While I cannot promise you a resolution on what should be done about the sisters, I can guarantee you that we will discuss remuneration for you and your compatriots for both, you know, what you may have to do in the future and, um, and heading back out to that, uh, to that manner. Do we have, with, with the death of FAPS, is there, we have no provided we're able to save one of the sisters. There is no other, we, do you know of any other, um, any other, inheritor of, of, of that locale. One of my other responsibilities is now to determine what happens to this land and, and to this to this manor. No, I'm, there's there's his like man well I don't know what is he head head manservant or ward or whatever. There's there's uh there's Elon um that's the only that's the only I guess you know man who uh, who stands to be related in any way to uh Faps. Um, but yeah, apart from him, I guess it's the the daughters. Yeah, the three daughters. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna con I mean that oh, that that it took me almost I mean, when 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 they came out and he says to you, this to you like uh, kind of as a side note, right? He's because now he's starting to trust you more and more, and he's starting to give you some side details that are not necessarily important, but like you, when he's usually speaking to somebody, he's very straight and to the point. Mm. With, with DACA, he's starting to have conversations of trust, simple things, right? And he says, God, when they showed up to take possession of that manor, that was 10 years in the making. And now here I am trying to decide where that property goes yet again. Yeah. yeah. So he says, I, do you think Elon would be amenable to a conversation with me? 
I think is he, so. Meaning, is he of the mindset? Will he be a Will he be a reliable witness? I mean, it was it was a big it was a big deal for him, you know, seeing uh, seeing Faps slain in front of him. Uh, but I mean, it's been a few days by now, isn't it? He should be all right. Yeah, and he 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 says that he says yeah. There's um there's we we have we have uh, we've placed his body. Um, we've 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 taken care of it. We've taken his belongings and removed them. We've wrapped him in preserves as best we can. Um, he is in a cool <laughs> he's in a cool location. Um, you know, but we've there there is the determination of what to do with his body, whether to burn or whether to bury. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is something we have to make relatively fast. But um, his loss has not gone unnoticed. It, you know, from from your reports, he was obviously a valiant individual. Absolutely, yep. He uh, he died a hero's death for sure. Fair enough. Well, um, then I will take my leave of you. Uh, I will meet with the uh, council in the morning. I'm going to have to take this evening to kind of think about how I'm going to how I'm going to put this together and package this together for them, so that this doesn't become a 15 week discussion. <laughs> And we can kind of force them to make a decision or at least have them help us make a decision. Because as you know, with politicians, we, I mean, we, I'm assuming you're no politician. Neither am I. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kerlon. And uh, I'll come back tomorrow. All right. So he stands and he walks you to the door. Um, you know, very, you know, some small, uh, some small side talk. You know, you're like, oh, you're none the worse for wear. Any major injuries? Thank you so much again, that type of thing. Shakes your hand for, I mean, great. Again, you're building a relationship with this man, right? Very trusting one. And then he, he allows you to exit. What is, what is, so what is, what's going on in Daka's head now? I mean, everything I just said. There's <laughs> not, there's not, there's not much under the, under the hood. Is and that's there? fine. I just wasn't sure if there was anything you wanted to ask about this or. No, it seems, that seems all pretty good. Okay, so where does what is where does Daka go next? What what's what's next on Daka's mind? I mean, the problem is he doesn't know. He doesn't know what I know. <laughs> That's the problem, no, Jack. Right? <laughs> That's the bloody problem. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? So here's so let's go out of character. <laughs> so Daka is walking out of town on the first major um, task placed on him before the magistrate of Victor, right? Mm. It's the first time that he's met Eliad and and Flargo Snarp. He's known Demetria from your travels here, and you struck up a we'll call it an easy friendship, not an uneasy one, not a good one. Mm-hmm. You just know of each other, and you said, "Yeah, I've got a guy who I think would be perfect to accompany me." And Kalon finished out the party with a healer he could trust and someone that Oriolensis wanted to go in the party. And as you're walking out of town, you feel this jab in your in your butt cheek, right? <laughs> And you turn around and you see this 10 year old boy looking down and it's, we now know him to be little Jimmy who is just enthralled that there's a member of the gray in the town. Right. And it's just, you know, it's, it's like when that, that little kid sees the police officer for the first time or the firefighter for the first time or, you know, whatever it may be. And, um, you strike up a very easy conversation. And then as you remember, little Jimmy, Follow, you don't know he's little. Well, no, you you do know he's little Jimmy. At the end of that, <laughs> he follows you all the way to the manor, right? Yeah. And sneaks in, comes in with you, and <laughs> against your best personal judgment, he actually gets involved in combat and is able to actually kill three cultists himself <laughs> with his sling. Yeah. Right. So you not only have you introduced this child to great danger, <laughs> you've also had him kill his. He's got three fresh kills under his belt, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, but we also know that in quote unquote medieval times, whatever time frame we'd put this in, that by about 12 or 13, the common person is probably going to be married and starting their own life, right? Yeah. They're yeah. going to be farmers of some kind, blacksmiths of some kind. They're going to be something. Yeah. They will have started to apprentice. So it's not like this is the 10 year old of today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this individual schooling probably would have been the extent of here's how you bait a hook. Here's how you plant crops. Here's how you chop down trees correctly. Here's how you sew buttons. You know, all of the stuff that somebody would need in a medieval. Literally better than today, by the way. <laughs> quite, quite yeah, right. Exactly. Right. We can't even balance a checkbook. So, um, so 
little you come back with little Jimmy and little Jimmy's kind of lost when you return, right? Like you're like, okay, run along. Like you're figuring go to mommy, right? You've yeah. been with us for it took a day and a half to get there, a day and a half to get back. So that's three days plus two days down in the catacombs, right? Mm. So this kid was with you for a week and you're like, man, this kid's parents are like, what the hell's going? Where's my kid? <laughs> yeah. So DACA being DACA, very whether or not this was correct or not, instead of like saying, hey, where's your mama? I'll walk you home. You're like, just get the hell out of here, kid. <laughs> you assume that this this kid who was maybe it was because he had taken such good care of himself yeah. that he could get home OK. Yeah. Well, then you had a conversation with Kalon later where they had been searching for little Jimmy because he's the local orphan. And he kind of is, quote unquote, raised, cared for, taken care of by the town. He doesn't ever really sleep in anybody's homes unless there's a very bad, you know, weather period. For all you know, he's got a little, you know, lean to set up just outside of town in a little corner of the of the woods mm -hmm. that he just kind of calls home. You know, he was very he, he was he was very slick. He, he could he could maneuver silently. He was he was a, he was a worldly little kid. So, but when Daka comes back, what's wouldn't he think about little Jimmy? I guess he would. Do you know what? He knowing could. that he's a knowing that he's an orphan now, because you didn't know that when you cut him loose. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe then to to go back before we exit Kalon's office. Okay. <laughs> it's, it, as long as it's okay to say. It yeah, you, that's more than fine. Yeah, that's good. So. Daka will have thought about little Jimmy a bit, and yeah, because he did learn. He did learn he was an orphan, didn't he? So yeah, he, could, he did. He yeah, could, you were uh, you were told this. Yeah, so now we've been away for about another week, haven't we? I guess. Yeah, pro probably about that. Right? Yeah, about five, one, two, three, five, about five, about five to six days. So about another week. Yeah. Yeah. So after about another week, uh, so yeah, um, it's hard, right? Because he's still. He's still like uh, he's still Daka, right? So he's not gonna. Yes, he is exactly. He's not gonna turn. So how? Into... how yeah, how attached is he to this kid? Yeah. And how unattached is he to this kid? Yeah. So maybe, maybe in like the little conversation that Kalon's making as he says goodbye, just as a passing thought, Daka probably thinks, uh, "How's little Jimmy doing?" By the way. Okay, so now here's the next question in your report. <laughs> Did you mention little Jimmy? Oh well, he he'll have been mentioned in the f last report, right? Like the last report. Did I did I report the last time? I, we, you haven't given a formal report. You did go to see Kalon, and you said we've got to go back and all of that good stuff. Right. And Kalon had told you that they were looking for uh, a child who was who was missing little Jimmy ostensibly. Right. But you never I don't think you ever mentioned that he went with you <laughs> and that he had committed murder <laughs> and all of this stuff, right? I don't think that ever came up. I could be wrong. But I'll tell you what, Jim, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you ret retcon that <laughs> one way or the other. Right. Well I mean if we didn't mention him, we didn't mention him. Right? But then, so then this report, is this report going the whole thing then? Is this report not just from the last visit, but both visits? Or all yeah, this would have been your culmination, right? So because you, you, would have, you would have given details all the way up. That's why he pulls out his book and, mm. and opens up to certain pages and continues writing on those pages. Yeah. So you definitely would have said something on the lines of, man, this is what we found. We've got to go back. We've got to keep going deeper. We got our asses beaten. We had to re retreat, yeah. re re recover come back here, see what the heck is going on, get some more supplies, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm sure when, when he said that the kids lost, we said he was with us, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm I pretty don't recall. Sure. That's what I'm saying. I'd I'm have to go back and watch like I'm three episodes sure. ago. But I'm that's why I'm letting sure. you retcon it. So that's on you. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I'm pretty sure we didn't mention that he was down there fighting with us. But I'm pretty sure we said he, like, he followed us and... Uh... <laughs> Yes, probably Randy. <laughs> so yeah, we probably, <laughs> we probably, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure actually, you know, without going back and watching, I'm pretty sure that when he mentioned that they were looking for the orphan, that we said, well, funnily enough, he followed us and, uh, and he's back now. So yeah, I, 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 okay. I'm pretty sure. So 
he wouldn't have yeah would, wouldn't mention him killing people but <laughs> mention <Why> not? <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not mention the murders but uh definitely mention that he he followed us and stuff yeah yeah so like yeah well and, and so that's the thing right now let me ask you this because i ask i ask dimmy a lot about elon <laughs> little jimmy fancies himself a junior gray right yeah he knows he's not he knows in his heart of hearts he's really not but he's fancying himself as like you know daka's number one guy mm. i would assume he's going to keep as many secrets as possible mm. would little jimmy have told doc i'm sorry told kalon what happened while he was in his office crying and kind of you know what i mean yeah, I guess. So. Would he have spilled the beans that he killed people? I mean, it's oh, a good question. It's a good question. Like, it's hard to say, right? Because although he's ten, he's not like, as you say, he's not a modern day ten year old. But he exactly, probably would, he probably would also, be crying his eyes out. Would, of would it be in the back of his head that he's like, God, if I tell everybody what's going on, they may never let me go with him again? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like when your uncle takes you for the first beer, yeah. right? And you're like, there's no way I'm saying anything because I want another beer with my uncle, right? It's a, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's a tough question. But it is. He did kill three people, <laughs> and he was involved in combat. He was scared out of his wits, right? I mean, literally, right? He saw the worm eat what's his name, and he, I mean, he, was, he was witnessed some crazy, hairy yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, giant rats. <laughs> yeah, giant <laughs> quad bull. What the fucking rat? Did you see the rat? <laughs> yeah, pretty amazing. Pretty, he's seen some shit, hasn't he? For a, he's, he's yes, seen he has some, for a, for a ten year old, right? For a bloody fifty year old, he's seen some shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, that's um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's a hard question, right? As to whether he'd whether he'd spill the beans or keep his mouth shut. I don't know. I really don't know. It's so long ago since I was ten. And I wasn't ten in a medieval setting with. <laughs> yeah, like, with I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say that he is gonna he's gonna be tight lipped, mm. just dramatically tight lipped. So much so that he is going to he's going to ex absolve you from everything. <laughs> yeah. Meaning he's gonna be like he didn't know I was going. He didn't even see me half the time. And I followed him down into these catacombs, and he he kept me really safe, and I was I wasn't allowed to do anything. I mean, he really he did his job, and he looked after me, and there's just you know what I mean. He's he's gonna go out on a limb to make you sound like friggin' like, I mean you're you're a, you're a vestal version as far as he's concerned. Like you you are unplowed snow. You are pure baby. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yep, that's fair enough. <laughs> so, okay, so when you ask him, he says, and you see his face kind of drop a little bit, and he's like, I fear I may have been a bit hasty, Daka. Oh, dear. They, we actually caught him stealing, trying to steal, and he looks down at your hand crossbow. <laughs> and you can, and Kalon's not an idiot. Right, he knows in his interactions with little Jimmy have have gone around how great. In fact, little Jimmy probably didn't mention Elliot. He didn't mention. I mean, he meant everything. Like Daka killed everybody, right? And Daka, you know, Daka. It was like the it's like the line from from Braveheart, right? Fireballs from his, you know, and lightning from his ass, right? Yeah. It's, he, as far as he's concerned, man. Eliad and Dmitriev and Flargo Snarp, they didn't kill anything. Daka killed everything. And on top of that, you were carrying everybody while you were doing it. Like physically, literally, right? <laughs> um, so he knows that this kid is a little bit starstruck. And he goes, we caught him stealing. And he's never, never done anything. The last time we caught him stealing is when he came into town with that caravan when his parents were killed. And we made it abundantly clear, everybody, all of the, you know, everyone from the rowdy gnome to the quad skull, he gets dinner wherever he chooses. He gets breakfast, lunch. Here's no need for this young man to steal. <laughs> <Timmy>. <laughs> and 
when when we caught him stealing, I'm I don't know where that came from. Mm-hmm. And I made the hasty decision. He we don't have an orphanage in town to care for him. And they have a very, very good one up in full point. And he needs guidance. He needs the guidance of someone who can care for him. Mm. And guidance is a tough thing when you reach a certain age because he obviously doesn't believe he needs that. What boy at that age does? You know, you and I were probably as hard headed as he is now. So I've asked I've asked the local priest to to take him to full point. They're supposed to leave in a couple of days. Right now he's being housed over at the uh, over at the temple on the north road. And I'll be honest with you, Jim, I haven't come up with the religion of what that temple is yet. So we'll we'll retcon that later. Mm-hmm. Priests, you say? <laughs> you say about that with that look? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, they are tasked. Uh, they are tasked with this. Uh, <laughs> they are tasked with um, one of their tasks is to care for until you know until uh, the, the the proper age of an individual to care for the orphans and to care for um, for the elderly, and they do a fantastic job at that. As far as I'm concerned, wow, um, I, but I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to go with this. If he can, if he if he if he is insistent on this activity. I have to address it eventually. And I don't want to go where that has to go. It's either I, it, it, my thought process was he either goes with the priesthood now or he is conscripted into military time in a, in a couple of years and which is worse. Oh, it's the priesthood. <laughs> without any doubt, without any doubt. I mean, I, though, from what I, my experience, from what I know about the priests, I think this is the worst thing you could have done, Kalon. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, is, so, that's terrible. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I mean, if is there any way I can save him from this fate? So he looks down at his shoes, right? He's, he's like, oh, it's like I, I, I wish, like I wish. After our great conversation up to this point, everything's been reported correctly. All of my decisions have dealt directly. This is, you can tell this was a hard decision for him because the kid's been in town for a couple of years, right? Mm. And the kid is beloved by the town, right? He's a good kid. Mm. And he kind of looks at you and he's like, it's like he realized that he took the easy way out. Mm. He really did. But he had, he didn't know what else to do, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he's allowed to take the easy way out. And he says, you know, but he also kind of, when you say, you know, with the priesthood, I can tell you from my experience, that's the worst thing you could have done. <laughs> his eyes is, is one of his, his eyes kind of crick up a little, like he doesn't ask, he doesn't prod because this is obviously a personal thing, but out of character, Jim. So why the, why the distrust of the priesthood? This is a, this is a development thing for DACA. Why? What's going on here? Well, you know, the, <laughs> I mean, I haven't fleshed that out yet. I'll be honest in my head, but it just, oh, it just, come it, on. <laughs> is it, but it, is it, is it something from your childhood? Is it just a complete distrust of organized religion whatsoever? I mean, I, I haven't fleshed that out yet. Jack Paul. I haven't fleshed that out yet. Okay. okay I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a reprieve on that one, brother. I haven't fleshed it out. But I want you to think about that. But yeah, it's, <laughs> no, Dale, it's, stop. Stop, Dale. We're not yes, going there. I mean, no, that's exactly it, Dale. That's exactly it. But I don't know how to, I don't know how to work that into. We'll just, we'll just, if, if that's, if that, so I don't want to, yeah, because we don't want to go there, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll figure out something about a distrust there. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's tough because, so when you talk about like a D and D world, you, you know, you, you try to bring in real worldly situations, right? Yeah. But you try to do it in a manner that still quote unquote has taste, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's tough. It's like, there's other issues like, it, it, um, you know, the, the we'll call it the taking of indentured servitude, right? There, mm. There's other words for it, mm. but 
you know how you know how softly do you tread on those lines considering the real world yeah, we'll just yeah. say that yeah yeah no it's a good point. um so we'll 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 come back to that we'll come back to that um mm. but uh, but but kaylon so you said is there any way to get you to change your mind right yeah, yeah. someone people have tried to take responsibility for him daka Mm-hmm. He won't allow others to take. He's a he's a free spirited kid. For the past two years, he's lived on the streets without living on the streets. He's always had the comfort of knowing that at the end of a given day, there's a bed and a meal. So he's not he's not a beggar. He doesn't there when he needs clothes. They always find their way to his bed the next morning. <laughs> when he needs food, all he does is he walks into a certain door, right? A door at the quad skull or a door at the black garden. And a meal is just, you know, so a meal happens to miraculously walk out the door to his table. <laughs> you know, he never has to say, even though he always says, thank you. It's, it's, he's, he is, we'll call it spoiled as a result of that. He, he does not go wanting, but it still has to be a hard life. He lost his parents two years ago. Mm. So he has not attached. We were hoping that he would attach him to, himself to one of the great, great families. We have a lot of great families in this, in this town, but he won't attach himself. Maybe it's our fault for not requiring him to attach to somebody. But how do you look at someone like him and not give him food? or board or clothing when he followed you when he followed you did you not care for him yeah yeah a bit <laughs> did our best so you know so you understand you know his the way that he endears himself to people yep and i, I do fear that i made the wrong decision and, and we you know they do don't not leave for two years but What's the alternative, Daka? I will need some alternative. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess I could take responsibility for him. So right there, Kalon's, I mean, Kalon's mouth drops. (laughs) I mean, just drops, right? Because he never saw this coming, honestly. (laughs) Um how would you care for him when I need to send you places, Daka? You're, you're a man without a, without a home. I mean, you have, you're always welcome here. That goes without saying, that's not what I'm insinuating, but you're a man of, you're a man of task. We'll call it that. What happens when you aren't here? Well, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a place, haven't I, in Victor? So he can stay there. He can look after it while I'm gone. What if you don't return? Well, what if anyone doesn't return? I mean, <laughs> well, that's, that's, I, and I, I, I very much believe that's what you were going to say. But honestly, it's like, do we wait? So we would have to discuss this in detail as far as how do you communicate to us that everything is still fine? Please keep continuing. Who watches him when you're gone on the if I have to if I have to ask you and you accept the charge? To go somewhere for seven, fourteen, thirty days, what happens to the young man then? These these have to be considered, Daka. Well, that's what you get paid to do. <laughs> but I, I I can't care for him. You're the one volunteering, Daka, and I didn't believe me. I appreciate that, but I have to ask these questions. Yeah, look, I'll I'll do my best. That's the. Uh... Uh, you know, I, just I, I can't ex- I can't accept that as an answer. There's got to be I'm not expecting you to come up with a plan here and now, but there's got to be something there. There's the, the plan of I'll do my best just isn't good enough. It's better than for that, the for this situation. I would be entrusting you with the life of another that literally cannot make that decision for himself. While I have no doubt he would rejoice to the highest of heavens for, for you <laughs> saying that you would care for him. We still have to consider that he is still a young child in this, 
in this open world. Yeah, but I mean, there's no there's no guarantees of anybody surviving, is there? Like his like his parents, for example. <laughs> yeah, granted. You know. So, I don't see that my line of work makes it uh, any worse than anyone else, to be honest. Well, it's not necessarily your line of work, but what we do when your line of work takes you away. If you're, if you're expecting to care for him, you know, I, I, undoubtedly the town would still come through for him. We've done it for two years. But at the same time, you're expected to care for him. There's got to be, we need, there needs to be a plan there. And I'm not against this. I mean, again, we get to keep little Jimmy in our area and you're taking responsibility. And I, I commend you for that. But you need to think about this in depth. I will do. And we need to make a decision in the next two days. That sounds Otherwise, good. I have to stand by my first decision no matter how misguided it may be. Well, that's good. We can think about it for a couple of days. So he's currently at the orphanage. Um, I'm sorry, at the orphanage, at the temple. He's, he's, he's staying there. The priests are looking after him right now to make sure he doesn't get into trouble again. They're allowing him to, to roam again, but, but, but the town is kind of looking at him, and, and it's kind of... It's, I, I would say it's kind of embarrassing for him because where he used to come and go as he pleases, now when he walks into places, not that people are looking at him as a thief, they just want to make sure that he doesn't steal. Mm. So he's getting a different level of attention if you get my drift. Yeah. So maybe somebody should talk to him about that. Yeah. Well, maybe someone will talk to him if, they, uh, <laughs> if he doesn't go to the priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> so is that is that kind of how you end up end with Kalon? I guess so. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So that was a little 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 interlude inside there, right? Yeah. So then, now knowing what you know about about, about little Jimmy, <laughs> now knowing what you know about little Jimmy, what what's Daka's next move? I guess he's just gonna march into the temple, <laughs> and you would have full full purview to do that, right? I mean, this is not something where. This is not a private residence. It's an open temple. Again, we'll I'll retcon what, what god or goddess or whatever Patreon this is. It's not going to be anything of the gnomish world. It'll be something of the human world. We'll come up with something. Probably something to do with, with farming, logging, nature, that type of thing, considering what Victa's involved in, right? Yeah. Um, and you walk in, and you see familiar faces, right? You've seen several of these priests... There's a head priest, there's a couple of, of under priests, there's several acolytes, and you see several of Victa's citizens, you know, um, either praying and or making offerings inside the temple. The temple is very um, nondescript. It's a large structure in that it's, a, you know, about 20, 25 feet high on the inside. It is columnless. It is built straight up. It is built out of stone. But there are no pews. There are no areas to kneel. It's very much a, an old school um, interior temple where when someone was to hold mass or a ceremony or a religious rite, the townsfolk, whomever choose to be involved in that, would simply take up standing room position inside there. Um, there are several um, candelabras hanging from the ceiling, not candelabras, but candle type chandeliers, right? And those are about 15 feet off the ground and they're all lit, offering light. There's light coming in from the outside. But it offers a soft light on the inside as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dimmy wants you to headbutt a priest. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so what does Daka do when he enters? Um, well, that's it, I guess. I guess just... Uh, it's like, you know, accost, accost the, first, the first priest that he sees and says... Where's, uh, where's, where's this orphan that you've uh, taken in? So you grab one of the acolytes, right? So, so tell me how this goes. I mean, you say a cost, but I'm assuming you're not going to tackle him. No, no, no. But no, just like I do realize that there's... 
he's not like he's not a very uh, he's not a very like polite person, right? That's the thing. It's not he's not going to be like, oh, hello, mate. Can I? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's going to be accosting. It's not going to be like it's not going to be like you know a full on body slam or anything. But it's going to be it's going to be a like a you know a very like because he's still wearing his uniform as well, right? So like he's still yes, he it's is. still just going to be a like a you know. You know, I guess like how kind of a really fucking horrible rude copper would would deal with anybody. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's fine because I want I want to set a set a tone here because as as much as you're building relationships with others, mm. you can build I don't want to call them negative relationships, but just the other side of the arc of relationships with others, right? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be nobody is 100 percent polite with everybody, right? It just doesn't happen, and we all have our reasons for whatever that may be. Right, Elliot really doesn't like the country wizard. <laughs> right? While the country wizard may not may not approve or disapprove of Elliot, Elliot really doesn't like him because the guy just seems like he doesn't respect life. You, for whatever reason, just don't like the priesthood. <laughs> so the, the acolyte sees you, right? He knows you don't like the priesthood because you've been in town for a little while. Mm-hmm. And while you're I would assume you correct me if I'm wrong, while you're while your interactions are cordial. They are still to the point. They are nondescript from a standpoint of inflection or dropping the voice. Mm-hmm. You're very much keeping, if you had a way to keep a 10 foot pole between you two while you were having an interaction, you would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so the acolyte, he's smart, right? He doesn't, he, you, you aren't able to grab him by the arm because he's keeping his distance from you, he is giving reverence. He's giving respect because you're a member of the gray. He knows you're there for something because you don't walk into this temple without good reason (laughs) because you don't walk into this temple. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he looks at you and he says, one moment, gray. And he turns and he goes immediately and does exactly what he's been told to do. If that guy walks into this place, you go get the big guy right away. (laughs) He's the only guy that talks to him. Right, because we don't need anything breaking out. So the head priest comes up, and I'll, I'll retcon who he is and all that, and I'll give you a breakdown later, Jim. We'll we'll, we'll have this because this is going to be a maybe this is a character with a, of a minor article later if we need him. Mm-hmm. And the the but the main priest walks up, and he's he maintains about four to five feet from you, right? Yeah. Um, and he says, from. Hearing what the others around town were saying, I figured you, that you would come for, for Jimmy at some point. And he says, I know you to be a man of truth, if anything. And he says that with respect, but you know what he means, right? Mm. He doesn't want to deal with you as much as you don't want to deal <laughs> with him. Yep. Has Kalon confirmed that the boy may leave with you? Not yet. I just want to speak to him right now. Thank you. And he turns and he walks away and he goes and he opens a side door. He's gone for about two, two and a half minutes. And in front of him comes little Jimmy. But little Jimmy, you can tell he doesn't know why he's coming out the door because he's kind of looking around at first. And little Jimmy sees you. (laughs) And man, the whites of his eyes are as big as friggin' saucer plates. And I mean, he covers 20 feet in, in in half a second. Like we're We're talking setting world records and he just beats street. Right. And he is, he's dressed in a little alkalite robe, right? It's a little white robe. Right. And And he's got, he's got, he's got this little rope around his waist. That's tied off in a ceremonial knot. That's going down his side. And he runs up, man. And his arms go right around your leg. And he goes, you gotta get me out of this fucking place, Daka. <laughs> and he's he's so he's somewhat silent, right? He's somewhat silent. And but the head priest doesn't come anywhere past the door. He comes outside the door, closes the door behind him, and watches your interaction from a distance. He knows to keep his distance. Mm. Right? He just knows. He knows you're a man of honor, he knows you're a man of truth. He knows that you've done work for, I mean, you, you have a good reputation, Jimmy, but it's not like, it's not, you just don't have a cordial relationship, mm-hmm. man. And little, little Jimmy, man, you can hear him. He's not crying, but he's sobbing slightly. Like he's holding back 
tears on occasion, not tears of fear and just small tears of joy. Like, holy shit, he's back. Thank God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I shouldn't have done it, Doc. I shouldn't have tried to steal that quad. I'm a fucking idiot, Doc. They didn't, it got you in trouble, didn't it? I'm sorry, Doc. I'm sorry. Just get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> oh, God. I'll get you, I'll get you out of here, Jimmy. But, um, I've, I've asked Kale on, and uh, we're working on it. Okay, so, but paint this a little bit. Are you like, is he's holding on to your leg, right? Yeah. He's not looking up at you because he's his head's to the side, to the outside, obviously. Yeah. His head's to the side. He's not making eye contact with you because he's, he's ashamed. Yeah. He thinks you're mad at him like any 10-year-old would if you spilled the secret that Uncle Jim gave you a beer. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But he also tried to steal a six pack so he could bring you a beer when you came back, right? <laughs> so it's not just that you shared a beer with him, you went and tried to steal a six pack at the same time. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard, right? Because Dak is not like, not gonna be like, would be about as comfortable as I would be. <laughs> plus he's like, okay. a, plus he's a so heartless we're... murdering son of a bitch. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so you know, there's that as well, isn't there? So it's tough. So then, but then, why would and I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna corner you a little bit. Then why would DACA volunteer? Because it's it's that or he goes to the priesthood and that's it. You know, like at, at the end of the day, it's this is just like he's got to save this kid, right? That's okay. It. So there. So I want to go into that. So why do you need to save him? Is this an emotional saving? Because we don't know what your backstory is yet. Mm. Is there a is there the smallest chink in DACA's armor? Wow. At the at, at as Jimmy burrowed as little Jimmy burrowed a slight way in there. Yes, I or think is so. this business as usual? I think there's a tiny sliver of emotion. Yes, a tiny so then, sliver, and, that, and that's more than fine. So, but so does that come into this interaction at all? Do you put a hand on his shoulder? You know, so, do you what? What do you get down on one knee? What do you do? What is? I think it would be really hard for him to uh, to do that. <laughs> And that's fine. Yeah, that's really wrong with that. I think really to do that. I think, yeah, may, maybe a hand on the shoulder. Yeah, okay, that's... That's... And so, and so, so, so what do you say again? Tell me what you say to little Jim. Just, uh, you know, don't, don't worry. Don't worry, Jimmy. I'll, I'll get you out of this. I've spoken to Kaylon. We've got a couple of days to get you out. Okay, so right when you say, we'll get you out of this. So he probably doesn't hear anything more of that sentence but you feel like his tension drops his he exhales a little bit better he's breathing a little bit and he just goes and he goes um I, I didn't get you in trouble did i jim i'm sorry daka i didn't get you in trouble yeah i just i'm such a fucking idiot daka i didn't get you in trouble yet are you they're not you're not gonna lose your badge are you no i'm i don't worry don't worry jimmy i'm fine I don't know. You can't. Do I gotta stay here, Daka? Do I gotta stay here? You gotta stay here for a couple of days, but I'll get you out. I don't out. wanna stay here, Daka. It's, it's, it's just, I don't like this place, man. They, they're, they're nice people and all, but man, this place is fucking weird, man. <laughs> they're always praying. I don't understand, man. This is, man, I don't, I don't get it, man. Look at this shit. Look at what's the guy. I think I'm in this fucking world, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I love it when I bust you up. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's fucking. <laughs> it's like a. I, I just don't. I don't get it, man. I don't. Why would anybody want to do this? Oh god. <sighs> Some people are just fucking weird. <laughs> you gotta get. Promise me, Doc, you're going to get me out of here, man. Promise me you're going to come visit me, man. You got to come visit me a couple of times. You got to get me out from back there, man. I don't tell him. I can't. First of all, I just, I know I know you're going to do your best to get me out. Man, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I tried to steal, Doc. I was an idiot. But God, could you imagine traveling seven days on the road with these assholes? <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get you out, Jimmy. I'll get you out. You, you promise? I promise. 
So when 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 you say that, right? He kind of he starts to let go a little bit, and he and he lets his arms down to his sides, and he kind of backs up a little bit. And for the first time, he kind of looks up at you, and he kind of makes eye contact. And he's he's not like, you know, in Kalon's office, what we saw from from the break, right, was a, a crying, broken down kid because he had just been caught, and he was worried about, you know, and now he's a couple of days removed from that. Mm. And he looks at you with with that with that same stern look of you know the kid who followed you into the into the catacombs and the kid who ripped out his friggin his sling and him him killed a man with his <laughs> killed a man not to mention two others with his sling right yeah. and he looks a little more stern now and he and he kind of looks up at you and goes I believe you Daka dude how long. Can you at least stay a few more minutes and talk to me before I gotta go back there with these losers? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but what happened? What happened after you brought me back here? What happened down there? What happened down in the catacombs? There's a bit. There was a. Oh God. There was a. There was a big temple, and uh, the bad guy's dead. There was a bad guy. There was more. There was more. And like his, so like his eyes light up because now like you're you're starting to, now he's like you're 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 giving him a a, a moment of escape, right? <laughs> so you go through the whole story, right? The whole spiel. You spend, we'll say, what do you think? Maybe ten or fifteen minutes, kind of just calming him down. He asks a few more times, "You're going to come back for me, right?" You say yes. You're reaffirming him. Yeah. And um, so how do you return? This is going to be good. How do you return him to the priest? How do you say, okay, I've got to go? What? What is? Tell me that small bit. Oh God. Um, oh, that's a good question. So yeah, I'll say right. I'll say right, Jimmy. I've got to. I've got to go now. Um, but I'll. I'll do my best to get you out of here. And uh, and then yeah, just like, just just you know, motion over to the uh, to the priest, I guess. And, okay. Uh, so he he walks over the minute you motion to him, right? He walks over. Jimmy's Jimmy looks. You've you've taken time enough to calm the kid down, right? He's still not totally relaxed, but the the priest walks back up. He stays about ten feet away from you. Five, so we'll say that like little Jimmy is about three feet from you, and the pre and then he just stands there, waiting for you to basically tell little Jimmy to come with him. Again, he's being very respectful. He doesn't want to cause a scene. Yep. Yep. I would just say, right, off you go, Jimmy. I'll be back for you. So Jimmy turns and he goes right to the priest. And you can see he looks at the, as he goes by, he gives the priest a little sneer like, I told you so, motherfucker. <laughs> and, and then, but he doesn't, like, he walks, when he goes by the priest, he keeps a wide berth, right? It's in, and I don't want to insinuate like anything's happening. He just, he's, He's feeding off of Daka's energy while at the same time, like, dude, they finally corralled me, right? <laughs> Before this date or these couple of days, I was I had free range of the town. Mm. Now I can't leave the goddamn, <laughs> you know, the, the, this place. So he takes a wide berth. He's just pissed. And he, and, he, and he goes into the room. He opens the door. He, in fact, no, he doesn't just open. He kind of turns the, 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 the latch. And when he does it, he kind of... It's not a very hard kick because he's not a strong kid, but he kind of kicks, pushes the door open with his foot, right? Yeah. And then goes back in the back. And the priest follows him, shuts the door, and then comes back out and kind of starts doing his his thing again. Mm-hmm. And no longer regards you whatsoever. He just, he's done. He knows you're done. You'll leave or you'll stand there. You'll do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You're Doc of the Gray. Yep. So what happens next? Uh, that's a good point, so obviously just walk off and uh go back to uh go back to my house i guess and uh oh well, first of all try and sell all these fucking scimitars that i've got so we'll we're gonna we'll do that next episode we'll do that in brief prior to that's fine because i'm gonna i've got to go back and and i told the same to dimitri i've got to go back and calculate all the gold you stole off of the guys and all of that yeah. i did all the xp so i could figure out that you all leveled up um yeah. so yeah so the plan so excellent jim great job Keep thinking about that backstory a little bit, not necessarily. Yeah. With, I mean, I'm talking about the backstory arc, period, right? Yeah, Doesn't yeah, have to yeah. be the one with the priesthood. Because we need to start, you know, pulling a little bit more of who Daka is into the story so I can start writing a little bit more of that into the arcs that we're seeing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do like where he's going. I like that he's becoming like a no nonsense. Yeah, we're, 
you know, where, where I told, where I told Flargo, I said, I like the fact that like your character literally trusts nobody. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a cool little, little thing that, that, that moves. I'm going to be very curious to see what happens with Elliot. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the, the creme de la creme of all of this Absolutely, because yeah. he is so where you can predict what, what, what Flargo is going to do from a standpoint of not trusting people. Yeah. Where you can predict what Doc is going to do from a standpoint of seeing his duties through and being no nonsense, and where you can somewhat predict what Dimitrov is going to do about being honorable and making sure that everybody gets out alive. Mm. Elliot is such a free friggin' spirit, man. He's a <laughs> you know, he's dust in the wind as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. <laughs> you know, we don't know, and I love that about his character too because it gets me to really rethink things. Mm. Um, so going back to, to what's going to happen next, we'll come back to your, but yeah, I want you to really think about your character. And again, um, Jim, it doesn't ha don't, you don't have to give me 15 paragraphs, man. It can be very simple, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Okay. Here's kind of, you know, maybe, maybe you could tell me something that formed him in one of his first jobs that has turned him no nonsense. I don't know. Right. Yeah. But you, you figure that out. Yeah. I'll figure um, things out. Yeah. Oh, I know you will. So the next episode after Elliot, and I'll figure out with Elliot when we're going to hammer this. The next episode after um, Elliot will have everybody kind of congregate back in the quad school two days after returning to Victor. Mm. So we'll just say that you all took your two days to, you know, Demetra went and saw Miss Pelled Tree. He, he, he went and, and, and he's been having conversations with Elon and the seven... Um, <laughs> Elon and the Seven Dwarfs, Elon and the Seven uh, uh, Manservants. Um, you have been with Kalon. You've got to go back and talk to him about what the council is going to say. Elliot will find out what he does. I'm assuming he's going to talk to the the uh, the gnomish um, emissary who came to tell him that his master has passed. Mm, yeah. um, let's go to your character sheet. So leveling up, you've been you've you've seen two other characters do it. I'm sure you can remember how to do it already. Pull out your features on your features tab there, and you'll see where it says fighter level four. Drop that down to fighter level five, and then it's going to prompt you to roll for your hit points. And remember, it's got to be either a seven. Uh, no, for you, yeah, for it's got to be either a seven, eight, or nine. Reroll until you get one of those three. Oh, I, I don't know how to. Uh, oh, is it the top right hand corner? It should be. No, if you go to features, did you did you click features. on features? I don't know if where, where's features. <laughs> so if you open your character sheet, yeah. right. You'll see attributes, inventory, spellbook, features. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There you go. Got it. Got it. Right. I, to so, be honest, I didn't really watch. I just listened. <laughs> that's okay. No, that's fine. So mm. under fighter, you see where it says the drop down to the right uh, level yes. four. Yep. Drop that down and click level five. Yep. And then it's going to prompt you to roll your for your hit points. Yep. And then roll the ten. Roll again. Okay. So, yep. Seven. So there you go. So seven. So accept that. Boom. And then it should say either next or done. I think it's gonna yep. it's gonna prompt you that you get two attacks a turn now. Yep, extra attack fighter complete. Perfect. Boom, up to fifty four. Perfect. And then you click done already. Perfect. So now you're level five. Let me adjust your your experience points up to that level. Amazing. Okay, so I owe um, the party a few things. One of which is what loot did you get off of the bodies? <laughs> yeah. Um, what your um, agreement would be, or what the offer, not the agreement, because this is negotiable to a point, what the offer would be from the council to go back and continue to investigate what the hell is going on back at the manor, right? Yep. Um, we need to, we'll, we'll schedule Elliot and get him in there as well. What would be, so we know that one of your goals is going to be, how in the hell am I going to take care of little Jimmy and how am I going to fit that into my friggin' arc, right? Yeah. Because that's got some thought process to it. Yeah. What, what else, what would be another side goal of some kind? It doesn't have to deal with the night demon. It doesn't have to deal with a manor or it can deal with him if there's some aspect of that of like, you know what? I think Daka would do this. What else, what, what do you think that would be out there? I don't. I don't think he needs another side goal. To be honest, I think, and I, as if I, if I if I flesh out some kind of backstory, then maybe something will present itself. But I think it's okay just to you know, be doing the jobs to get the monies and do the things and, you know, look after. Well, I, I need. I, need a, I, I want something that kind of 
twines you into the story mm. versus DACA just being the guy who, and there's nothing wrong with, hey man, I came here for work. I want to get work and I want to get paid. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I, I need something to twine in a little bit there aside from little Jimmy because little Jimmy, you know, swinging his, his sling around only works for so long as a storyline if you get in my drift. Yes. We'll have some other stuff happen with little Jimmy. Believe me, I got some good ideas. <laughs> cool. But yeah, I don't know. Again, I'll, I'll have to think about I'll, I'll think about things. I'll think. About okay, things. yeah, just, just, and again, don't make it crazy. No. Um, <laughs> so yeah, don't make it crazy. But anyway, um, good times. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Thanks for being here for the marathon run with us. It has been a marathon, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it has. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, it's, what's classic is it's only two o'clock my time. I haven't eaten yet, so wow. I get to go make a make a nice big lunch now. Glorious. But um, for everybody who was around for that, actually, we got to close down. So why don't you close out the, the yep. thing and then I'll thank everybody. Yeah, thank you so much, Jack Bull. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.